If you've worked with multi-track drum recordings, you've no doubt experienced the problem of spill between mics, which can really muddy your mix, introduce phase issues, and really limit your processing options. Deeply Drums by Icon Digital offers intuitive real-time control over mic spill in drum recordings while preserving audio quality. For optimal results, Deeply Drums leverages neural network technology to separate the drum kit elements like kicks and snares, while DSP algorithms protect transients for clarity. All right, so first thing I wanna mention right off the bat is that Deep Lead Drums is not a gate. It's also not an expander. It's its own unique tool that is borrowing concepts from things like gates and expanders, meaning that we wanna get rid of the stuff that we don't wanna have in our tracks. We wanna eliminate that bleed, but we wanna preserve the information that's actually recorded on the channel. Sometimes with third-party products, you may find something that works really well, but you have to set it up in a very specific way, and that changes from the verses to the choruses. Deep Lead Drums is meant to be a very simple solution that does a better job at preserving the transient front end detail response, but also in terms of the way that it eliminates the bleed of your drum tracks is absolutely incredible. We're gonna take a look at three different examples. Let's have a really quick look at them. So first of all, let's start off with a kick track. Okay, so we can hear we have a nice kick, but we also have a snare drum and we have a little bit of hi-hats that are coming in. So I'm going to pull up an instance of Deep Lead Drums. You have different choices. We can load a kick drum, we can work with a snare drum, we can work with hi-hats, we can work with cymbals, and we can work with toms. These are the main elements that we can use Deep Lead Drums for. If you start off with kick drum, you could just start dialing this in, but a really great way to use this is to just actually start with a preset. So let's start with isolate kick, and I'm just gonna leave this exactly where it is. Let's go ahead and play this. Bypassed. So just as a reminder of how much bleed and how much spill we actually have. But take a listen to the kick drum. Take a listen to how much front end transient detail, how much punch, how much information we have. And the fact that when everything else is being removed, our kick drum is not falling apart and turning into a completely different signal. And first thing we're gonna take a look at is floor. This is pretty self-explanatory, but if I bring this all the way up, pretty much the same as having it bypassed. But now we can just dial back the floor. Now, in addition to that, we have a threshold slider. This can be useful in terms of fine tuning things, but anytime that you use some of these presets, they're at a really, really good starting point. So you might even not have to mess with it too much. For example, let's move on to a snare track example. And in this case, we're gonna load an instance of Deep Lead Drums over here. Let's isolate this snare. Let's take a listen. And this is going to be in bypass. And now let's go ahead and choose our snare preset. Now with this, we could choose the option to isolate snare and this will be really aggressive. Our floor is at minus 60 and our actual threshold is set and take a listen to this. Notice that even the ghost notes are preserved, but if we take a listen and we dial the floor back up, The amazing thing is that the tonality and the quality of the snare, it really doesn't change that much. Now, a couple things I wanna take a look at really quickly with respect to sensitivity and threshold. First of all, let's talk about sensitivity. If I adjust the sensitivity and move this up, this is gonna give us a little bit more of a natural result with the byproduct of having a little bit more spill in the background. Now, conversely, if we go the other way, it'll make it a little bit more choppy. But the thing to point out here is that I'm really not having to do a lot to get my settings to work. And if I take a look at something, we could go with a slightly less aggressive setting. So let's go with snare, gentle snare, deep bleed. Take a look at what's happening here. Our floor is set to minus 20. Also our threshold changed, which is preserving some of the ghost notes a little bit. Let's take a listen to this one.
we could adjust this. So this does an incredible job. Last but not least, we're gonna take a look at a hi-hat example, and we're gonna work with a hi-hat preset. So let's take a listen to this. Okay, let's modify this preset. Okay, as a reminder of where we started with this, let's bypass this. So that's incredible. I'm going to hop over to a different set of tracks over here. And what we have here is something that is more along the lines of actual multi-track drums that are recorded. Now, let's take a quick listen to these. Okay, let's isolate some of these tracks. So we have some bleed, snare. We hear a hi-hat and we hear a kick. Same for the snare bottom. And then last but not least, we have our hi-hats. And then of course, we also have some toms over here. And what I'm going to do is first of all, let's just make a selection and I'm going to add D bleed drums to every single one of these. Now I'm gonna just work with the presets, but in this case, instead of being super aggressive, I don't want that to happen. I wanna actually be a little bit more gentle. So let's go with gentle kick deep bleed and let's just take a listen to how that sounds. We'll go back to the beginning. You can bring this down even more. Okay, that's good. Next up, we're going to go to the snare. And again, I'm going to go with the gentle snare deep bleed. A lot of the times I like to be gentle when I'm working with multi-tracks because I don't want to completely remove everything, but I definitely want to have control over that spill, especially if I want to apply a lot of processing to any of these individual tracks. Okay, that's perfect. That's doing exactly what we want. In fact, what I'm gonna do is let's just drag and drop this to the snare bottom track. We'll have a quick listen. Maybe a little bit more in the floor. Next up, let's take a look at our hats. And let's bring this in. And we're going to go with, we'll go with our gentle hi-hats de-bleed. Okay, big difference on this. Okay, for this, maybe I want to tweak something. Maybe I can tweak the floor a little bit and maybe we'll also adjust the threshold. We can also adjust the sensitivity. And if we take a listen to the before. I'm gonna pull this back a bit. And let's say that I'm happy with that. Okay, next up, we're gonna take a look at the toms. Okay, first of all, let's deactivate this. Okay, for this, with my toms, I usually take a more aggressive approach. So for the toms, let's just go with the isolate toms preset. I'm not gonna to touch anything and let's see how that does. So that's pretty amazing. I hear the transient detail response of the toms. I don't hear anything else. And I'm getting the information that I need on that fader, on that multi-channel track. So I can push that up and I can apply processing, EQ, compression, or whatever I need. Okay, let's say I'm happy with that. And I could test it in the different areas to make sure that it works over here as well. Okay, perfect. Now the next one, we're gonna work with this tom track over here. So let's isolate this. And to start off with, we'll bring this into bypass. OK, 
Okay, and let's go with the same preset. We're going to isolate toms. We'll bring this out of bypass. Okay. <laughs> and keep in mind of where we started. This is taking out a lot. I might bring this up a little bit, but I mean, that's it. It sounds great. Okay, so now, next up, let's take a look at the overheads, and I'm gonna take a slightly different approach here. So for the overheads, let's take a listen over here. So for the overheads, I'm gonna use a different tool. I'm going to use Remix Drums because I wanna actually change the balance of the drums within the overhead. So for example, I might want to take the snare down a little bit. Let's bring the kick up. And also the cymbals are a bit much. And now I might be able to actually bring the overall level of everything up together. So now we've applied processing across the board. We're using Akon D-Bleed drums across all of these different tracks over here to clean up any bleed that we have of these tracks. And then we're using an instance of remix drums on our overheads. The kit room I'm gonna leave alone, but now let's take a listen to a before and after. Let's take a listen now from the very beginning. So that's pretty incredible. We have a tool that we can dial in pretty much instantly. And we have really simple controls, amazing presets that we can use as a starting point. And there's not a lot of fussing about. It's maybe just adjusting the floor and the amount, but these presets are a really, really great starting point to get you going. And what I can do now is now that I've eliminated a lot of that bleed, I can rebalance this to have a much tighter sound and I can control my ambience in other ways. And as you can see, I can even control the blend of what's happening in my overheads using an instance of remix drums. So in terms of being a producer or in terms of being a mixing engineer, this is one of those tools that you definitely want to have in your toolkit because what it allows you to do is get pretty amazing transparent results. We're not digging into the transient. We're not modifying or changing the sounds of our kick drums and our snares. And that's one of the byproducts of using gates and expanders, even good gates and expanders, is that a lot of them will dig into the sound. And then what you end up having is your individual close to mic sources. They lack the punch, they lack the clarity, they don't have the same vibe. And it's very hard to process them individually. But with a tool like this, you have ultimate control in terms of being able to minimize, reduce, or even completely remove any bleed that's happening on your drum tracks.